Tucker would only be about as thick as an eggshell. Don't start with food analogies. I'm getting hungry again. My point is that our atmosphere, as thin as it is, can still be broken down into four main layers. Examples, please. Okay, we live in the troposphere, the layer closest to Earth. The troposphere goes up about 12 kilometers, which is about seven miles. All the Earth's weather occurs here. The next layer up is the stratosphere. At the very bottom of this layer are very strong winds that blow eastward. This is called the jet stream. When large planes fly from west to east, they often hop into the jet stream. That extra push of wind from behind allows them to fly faster. Ooh. Also in the stratosphere is the ozone layer. Ozone is a special kind of oxygen that absorbs most of the sun's harmful radiation, like ultraviolet rays, which cause sunburn. Without the protection of the ozone layer, few living things could survive on Earth. Scientists have discovered a hole in the ozone layer over the South Pole. They're concerned that certain chemicals, such as chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, from aerosol sprays and refrigerators may have caused this. Bummer. If the hole gets any larger, that means more radiation will reach Earth, and there could be potential problems for the future. So it's really important for us all to keep our atmosphere healthy. Important stuff. OK, so you've got the troposphere and the stratosphere. Any other spheres? Sure, the mesosphere, the next layer up. It's the coldest region of the atmosphere, around minus 100 degrees Celsius. That's minus 148 degrees Fahrenheit. Unmanned balloons are often sent up to measure the temperatures of this layer. The mesosphere protects Earth from large rock-like objects from space called meteoroids. When meteoroids enter, the friction between the meteoroid and the mesosphere causes most meteoroids to burn up. Yo! Hot stuff! Have you ever seen a shooting star? A streak of light in the night sky? If so, did you know you weren't really seeing a star? Instead, you are witnessing a meteor burning up in the mesosphere. Occasionally, large numbers of meteors enter the Earth's atmosphere and burn up, all at the same time. This is called a meteor shower. It's a great show, and you don't even need a telescope to see it. The thickest layer in the atmosphere is called the thermosphere. It starts at about 80 kilometers above the surface. Or 50 miles. Here, the ultraviolet radiation from the sun turns to heat and causes the air to be very hot, up to 1,500 degrees Celsius or more. Now scientists break the thermosphere down into two more layers. Sneaky little devils, aren't they? What's so sneaky about calling the lower part of the thermosphere the ionosphere? I don't know. Why do they call it that? Because when the sun's radiation reaches this layer, the particles become electrically charged or ionized. Aha! Ionized! Ionosphere! Very clever. These electrically charged particles can cause the sky to glow. This is called an aurora. In the northern hemisphere, these glowing particles are also called the northern lights. The upper part of the thermosphere is called the exosphere and starts about 550 kilometers or 342 miles above the surface. Exo means outer in Latin, right? Yes. And the outer atmosphere is so thin here that one molecule of air can travel great distances without coming close to another molecule. This is the area where satellites, such as communication and weather satellites, orbit the Earth. That's it. All ready to go. What are you doing? Shh! Don't scare her. This is Roxy. She's part of my special project. What special project? I'm trying to recreate the atmosphere just as it was when the Earth began to form. So Roxy's going to supply me one of the key ingredients. Oxygen. But you're overlooking one important thing. 
What's that? When the Earth began to form about four...